It's SNAP election in New Brunswick 2020, and it's election madness. In December of 2018, then Premier Higgs said, Ottawa should cut equalization payments to force the provinces to develop their natural resources. He called it a reality discipline. I'm not sure what that means and suggested lifting the moratorium on fracking of natural gas for the province. But today, August 29, 2020, during an election, Premier Higgs promises to protect the environment, stating that we've gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to protecting the environment during our minority government, and we've made lots of positive changes to protect our woods and our waterways. Think about that. Here's a map from Research Productivity Council, RPC, recently put out through social media about all of the potential mining opportunities in New Brunswick. Now, here's a map of all the provincial waterways in our province. How can mining and protecting waterways go together in the same move? It's a form of madness. To continue on with the election madness theme, Jacques Poitra and the CBC English are at it again this election trying to influence your vote. And they do it by how they frame the story. And framing means putting it in a context, and by definition, you're leaving some information out. The framing is usually consistent that you have only two choices, red or blue. So here's a story about one particular constituency, Fredericton North, and how it serves as an example of that framing. Much like the last election, they're leaving out important information. So when I checked the Facebook for the candidates in Fredericton North, this is what I found. It tells a very different story as well. The Greens have 1,700 followers for their candidate. Liberals have 1,600 for the incumbent. People's Alliance have 1,200 for their candidate, and the Conservatives are a distant fourth with only 600 or so followers for their candidate. And yet, in Poitras' opinion, Fredericton North is only a two-way contest. Here's the results from the 2018 election, and you'll notice People's Alliance candidate was third, yes, but only 800 votes behind, and they've got far more followers than the Conservatives do this time around on their Facebook page. Also, what Poitras left out was that Fredericton voted for the Green Party candidate in the last federal election, and Jenica Atwin won and is now our representative. So all of those pieces of information go into this particular riding's potential outcome, and it looks much closer to a four-way contest than it does to the two-way contest that Mr. Poitras wants to suggest you to believe in. Given the role that social media plays in elections these days, especially in the last two elections we've witnessed here in Canada with a federal and a provincial election the past two years, just take a look at what's happening south of the border in the United States and the role social media plays there. How is it that CBC and Poitras left this out? Maybe more importantly is, why did they leave it out? Is it more election madness?